eyes and ears on me. Fingers on your lips. Let's go. I am Canada. I think if you went out today and you asked people, what does an early childhood educator do? Are you Canada? I'm Canada. I think a lot of people say, oh, they're babysitters. We are much more than babysitters here. Just say, stop, please. Stop. We're not here to just change diapers and watch them play. We're supporting their social, emotional, physical development. Good job. Whoa. Prepping them for their next stages of life. Many parents across the country are desperate for child care spots that don't break the bank. The federal government is promising 250,000 spots over the next four years. But early childhood educators that care for these children, many of them have diplomas or degrees. Some make little more than minimum wage. The job is not easy and many are leaving the profession. You want to put this away for me too, please? It is primarily women doing this job. No wonder they're leaving. Thank you. It's no wonder they're leaving because we're undervalued, I think. And I think also that's also related to the pay that we get, right? And we feel like we're forgotten. What do I always tell you? Kind and gentle. Deanna Colella is a registered early childhood educator, or ECE, with a degree in psychology. That's the best that he can do. So you just, you can repeat and say, my name is Julian. Okay, let's go, let's eat. With another ECE, she manages up to 16 preschoolers, including two kids with special needs, here at this child care centre in the heart of Toronto. I don't hear anybody saying thank you, Miss Deanna. Take my hand. You like that? Oh, nice. Ready? Let's make a stamp now. Ready? Things get messy, but she's teaching non-stop. Is that the world? You can sit there. You can smell the flowers. Use the magnifying glass. It may not look like it because all you see are toys and confusion, but there's a lot of learning happening here. We do maths with them. We do science with them. I'm starting geography with them. There's no time limit to teach them. Yeah. You know what? You can put them in the bin. Go look that's in the bin. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's I part told of the you, job. I told you this is what's going to happen. This is the ultimate in multitasking. Right? Uh, squish it up, my baby, bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud? All that learning matters. Research shows children who attend early childhood education programs are less likely to need special education classes or be held back a grade, and they're more likely to graduate from high school. You're professionals, you know, we have studied child development. We know the different stages, so we also know red flags. We know what to look for. We're always observing them. We're always listening to them. That's exactly why Lily Desda's son is here. Nyhair has Down syndrome. Oh, yeah. As a parent's perspective, I'm just giving love. For them, is they're actually focusing on his needs. Show me how you wash your hands. His mental okay. progress and everything. So I really need them. Oh, I missed. Did you get it? Lily says Nyhair's motor and social skills have come a long way here. And that means everything. If teachers, they do honestly deserve a lot more than what they're getting right now. That high quality of care is in demand. But like many child care centers across the country, spots are limited. It's about this thick. The wait list the wait. is about this thick. Yep, yep. Eva Laxon manages 10 nonprofit child care centers across Toronto, including this one. She says staff are leaving because the pandemic has exhausted them. And she isn't sure $18 an hour to start will attract the tens of thousands of new educators needed for $10 a day care. Do you think we're going to get there? I don't think so. I don't. We're trying to hire supply staff, like it's, it's, it's hard. I think just the stresses of this job and, you know, the responsibilities, I think people just recognize that maybe it's just not enough for what they're going to pay. Yeah. ECE Kelly Galland says no, exactly. if not for her right, partner, living in Toronto would be impossible. Then... I would say it's almost insulting that we're expected to do the work that we do and receive the payments that we receive. With the education and the training that we go through on an annual basis, we do professional development courses three times a year at least. Is this something you would recommend people get into? 
Emotionally, yes, I would recommend it because I know the benefits that it has on me and the positive impact it's had in my life. But realistically, is it live, like doable, manageable, livable? No, it's not. For parents, that's tough to hear. I admire them so much. I know it's a very hard uh, job to do. I, I couldn't imagine myself doing it. It kind of breaks my heart to hear that they're feeling compelled to leave the profession. I think that most people are probably on board with their daycare providers getting paid better. I think there's a, there's a way to find a solution. We'll have to figure it out. Time to sleep. Figuring it out could include paying college tuition for ECEs, benefits, sick pay, and paid preparation time, in addition to wage increases. You guys have done a great job. Look at everybody. But maybe more than anything, it's about respecting and supporting the early childhood educators that care for our children. Good night, everybody. Good night. Christine Virac, CBC News, Toronto. Yeah, time to sleep.